Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And gosh, this is a very difficult message for me to bring out today. Uh, just recently, I did a message. In fact, if we look at our YouTube channel before I go back to the image here on the screen there, uh, the greatest indictment ever. And it's not only the greatest indictment ever, but you're about to find out the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago end up becoming your modern day Nephilim. Believe it or not, a bloodline of Nephilim. And you're going to find that out. We're going to find this out through the Hebrew Matthew, uh, Shem Tob's uh, Hebrew Matthew that he brought out about a four or five hundred year old document. Many scholars, even such as Nehemiah Gordon, have uh, arguably brought out that this is clearly from an original document going back during the times of Jesus. Uh, and we're going to go deep into this. Uh, I do want to just mention real quick, though, before we get started on this here, I need your help on our YouTube channel. We just are not moving at all, and we know better than that. So uh, resubscribe to our YouTube channel, Israeli News Live. I need to get this thing over this hump. We've been stuck at 398,200 and some odd people there for about two, two months now. Yeah. Really? No, there's no way. There's no way that we're not growing. We know that. They're suppressing this channel. We should probably be up to a million subscribers by now. But uh, if you would, I would just like to really get over that hump of the 400,000 mark there, just so we can get out of that 398 area. Uh, kind of drive the YouTube people mad by showing that we can do it, even though they try to suppress us there. But uh, it takes your help in doing so. So I really appreciate your, your help in doing that. Uh, also, don't forget our, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Your support of this broadcast is critical. That's another thing they're trying to suppress, too, is uh, our, uh, the people that help us in keeping this ministry going. And uh, it is definitely uh, uh, in, in need. I'll just say it that way. So we, we thank you for your love and your prayers. Uh, donating online also is very important, especially when I'm away from home. So if you are able to and can do so, we thank, thank you and God bless you for that. Let's get right into this message though. The image I have on your screen is kind of like before the flood and after the flood, the typical thoughts of the Nephilim. Fallen angels, I guess, is really what's being depicted. And there again, this is just for illustration purposes there. Uh, fallen angels showing there on the left. And of course, after the flood, we got David and Goliath, uh, one of the giants of that time period. And this is normally the way we think of Nephilim. They're just huge, gigantic, giantism. Uh, even the uh, the giant of Kandahar that we hear uh, so much about, L.A. Marzuli bringing that out, very popular amongst folks there. Uh, we also, when we discovered the body of Nimrod in Iraq, very similar to that of the uh, Kandahar giant, multiple rows of teeth, seven foot tall type of individual, uh, the, according to the information I'd got there. But Jude... Uh, brings out some interesting uh, aspects when he says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord, and, Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, that how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities uh, about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh and are set forth for an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So, those men that crept in unaware, who really are they? According to what Jude writes, they're ungodly men. They turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So, these are not even believers, but they did creep in, and they crept in unaware. I think Jesus identified them very clear in his indictment. And we're going to really dive into this deeply now. Um, this is, message is not for the faint of heart. I can promise you that. It's not. And uh, we're going to be looking at the Hebrew Matthew. 
uh, very uh, legitimate scholars such as Nehemiah Gordon who have verified that the Hebrew Matthew Gospel, Shem Tov's in particular, is one of those. And I think he's looked at about nine different uh, fragmentary scrolls of the Hebrew Matthew uh, that have clearly given us the indication that this is not a document that is just only 400 years old. It is derived from obviously what we know to be uh, that of the Hebrew Matthew of what Matthew would have actually written initially. So without me having to add into all that information there, uh, we'll just use that as our premise for knowing that Shem Tob's uh, Hebrew Matthew here is a, indeed an authentic document and very accurate. So, and I'm going to be using this mainly because I'm really wanting you to get a, a more in-depth view of what we're looking at here. Now, of course, one of the big arguments that uh, Nehemiah Gordon does in the very beginning is right here because even the English side of George Howard's translation, George Howard does Shem Tob's Hebrew, uh, Hebrew Matthew, he doesn't translate verse 3 accurately. He puts the word they in parentheses. Now, all, all which they say uh, to you keep and do. Now, let's just get started because this whole indictment, this whole chapter of Matthew 23 is going to be provocative, but I'm going to kind of first set the stage here where it said, where Jesus, right, where it's written by Matthew, then Jesus spoke to the people and to the disciples. As deber Yeshua el ha'am ve'el ha'talmidav. All right, that's where he speaks to the, to the, and I'm not going to do all this in Hebrew by no means, just here and there we'll, we'll mention some of the Hebrew words here for, for certain clarity. Saying, Upon the seat of Moses, the Pharisees, as Pharisees and the sages sit. All right, very true. In other words, the Pharisees had taken over the seat of Moses, uh, and there was, uh, you know, according to archaeology, there was an ancient seat called the seat of Moses that, that were in some of the synagogues, and I think Nehemiah brings out one of the oldest synagogues ever to be archaeological. Uh, uncovered and finding the the seat of Moses sitting in the synagogue was in Greece. But uh, the Pharisees had now taken over that spot. And this is what I think is important that Jesus is bringing out. Now, it says here, V'ata kol ashar yomer lachem shamu, okay? Uh, now all that which literally, right here, now this is where, I'm sorry, I'm, on, I'm actually on the, uh, that, I was actually reading the part about the sitting on Moses' seat, but verse 3, Ve'ata kol ashar yomer lachem shamru. Okay, yomer lachem shamru. Now all which he says to you, lachem, all right, that's right, Whoop, I can't even get the right word, won't you let me highlight the word yomer, what do you know? Anyway, uh, all that he says, Yomer is the word for he says. In other words, the antecedent here in this case is Moses' seat. Okay, it's Moses' seat. So in other words, all that Moses says, you're to keep and do. All right, in other words, he's not having a problem with you keeping and doing that which Moses says. But then he goes on to say, but according to their, uh, but, excuse me, but their ordinances, the word according to is not in there. Uh, ordinances and deeds do not do because they say and do not. He's talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees. Um, you don't, in other words, you don't follow their teaching. Their, uh, their obviously Talmudic teachings, and uh, and so therefore we don't need to follow any of that. All right now. But I'm going to take you further down. We're going to continue on into chapter 23 here because chapter 23 of Matthew is an, what, what I call an indictment chapter. And Jesus is not only going to indict the Pharisees, but he's going to identify them not just as the seed of vipers or serpents, He's going to go deeper into it. And this is what I have been blown absolutely away by. Um, so mm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking right now as to which way to address this. Because 
the uh, let me I'll tell you what for the sake of not losing you and what I'm going to go into let's go down to the part of the actual indictment itself all right this is this is where I mentioned to you the other day uh, and, and then we can put the rest of this into into the right perspective here um, but I want to get to the part where he brings out. Uh, okay, here we go right here. The actual indictment is right here. In verse, let's start with verse uh, 34. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of Jews, Therefore, behold, I am sending to you prophets, sages, and scribes. Some of them you will kill. Some of them you will afflict in your synagogues. And you will pursue them from city to city. Upon you, the blood of every righteous. Now they put it in order to place, but it doesn't actually say that in the Hebrew. Eliachem, dom kol tzadik. Okay, upon you, all the blood of the righteous is what it says. Um, of every righteous one which was, has been poured out upon the earth from the blood of Abel the righteous unto the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barkiah, whom you kill between the temple and the altar. So he is literally indicting the Pharisees of his day for all the bloodshed that has ever taken place upon the earth going all the way back before the flood with that of Abel all the way to modern times. Now the bloodshed before the flood is done by your fallen angels for the most part. But he takes it even to the blood of Abel, whom Cain actually slew. And the one thing that I picked up from this almost immediately was a bloodline. It was clearly a bloodline. And then as I began to study and put this together for you, then I realized the whole chapter of 23 is identifying that bloodline itself and it identifies it in a way that is not very nice. So let's go into this. Let's get back up here. We'll start back at verse 4. They demand and set forth great burdens. He's talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees who have now taken the place of Moses. Um, which the shoulders of men are not able to bear, but they themselves, even with their finger, are unwilling to move. All their actions they do for the sake of appearance. They wear expensive garments and large tassels called filibilios. They love to recline first in the banquet halls and to be seated first at the synagogues, to prostrate themselves in the streets and to be called rabbi. But as for you, do not desire to be called rabbi. All right, one of the interesting things there. Jesus actually says, if you look at this in the Hebrew, he actually says, you don't want to be called rabbis. He said, one is your rabbi, and all of you are brothers. Then he says, verse 9, do not call upon the earth, uh, excuse, call no man upon the earth father. One is your father who is in heaven. He goes on, verse 10, Do not be called rabbi because one is your rabbi, the Messiah. Verse 11, The greatest among you will serve you. And verse 12, He who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who is humbled will be exalted. Now he goes in, verse 13. This is where the indictment actually begins. And by the way, when they translate, the, or the way they use the word sages here, it's actually the word in Hebrew for smart ones. Okay? Woe to you Pharisees and sages, or woe to you Pharisees and smart ones. Hypocrites! Because you close up the kingdom of heaven before men and you yourselves do not enter and those who wish to enter you do not permit to enter in the Hebrew language that we have written right here to your left I'm going to translate this more accurately for you 
He says to them, Woe to you Pharisees and smart ones, godless, smart ones and godless ones. You can also translate that as hypocrites, but they're godless ones. That's one of the first key elements right there, that they are godless ones. The kingdom of heaven is before the face of man, and they come to without without you, but you prevent them from coming. Okay? All right, let me let me buy the kingdom of heaven is before the face of man, and they want to come without you. But you are preventing them from coming. There, and I forget where I shared this with you guys before. There is somewhere, and I have shared it in the past with you, that the Pharisees are of the archons. And when I read this scripture here, I remembered sharing that with you guys, that they are of the archons. Um, let me pause for a moment. Maybe I can find that. All right, so I did find it here. This is in the one of the Egyptian documents here, and it says, I will speak to those who know to hear, not with, uh, not with the ears of the body, but the ears of the mind. For many have sought after the truth and have not been able to find it because there has taken hold of them the old leaven of the Pharisees and the scribes of the law. And the leaven is the errant desire of the angels and the demons and the stars. And as for the Pharisees and scribes, it is they who belong to the archons who have authority over them. Now, again, this is not a biblical document, but it is a 2,000 year old document, uh, roughly thereabout, and the fact of the, the historicity of this document showing that the Pharisees belong to the archons and they actually have authority over them. So it gives validity to what I am sharing with you now as I look at verse 13. It says, Woe to you, Pharisees and sages, hypocrites, because you close up. The, the kingdom of heaven before men, and you yourselves do not enter, and those who wish to enter, you do not permit to enter. And that's the way, that's the way George Howard translated that. But when I began to translate it, I got it, and I saw that it says, Woe to you Pharisees and smart ones, godless. That's a key right there, they're godless. Then he says, The kingdom of heaven is before the face of man, and they want to come without you but you prevent them from coming. So as we look at that, and I want to show you this in the Hebrew right here. He says right there, Oy lechem, woe unto you, ha-parashim ve-ha-techamim, Hanafim, that's the godless ones right there. Malachot Shemaim Bepana Bene Adam. All right, right there. There you go, right there. Okay, the kingdom, Malachot Shemaim, the kingdom of heaven, Bepanav, in the face, Bene Adam, in the face of the sons of man. Vehaotzim Labo, and they want to come. Then he says, Einchem. They want to come without you. But you will not let them to come. That was so provocative to me. They're wanting to come. You know, the bad thing is, is, it's almost like, for example, it's like it's expressing that a person, when they die, they have to, you know, you, you, you know the old saying is, you know, Michael, the, the archangel is there to, to, to let you in, 
so to speak, right? But you can't even get, I mean, I mean granted, we just read over there that, that they are, according to this one here, Pharisees and scribes of the law, and the leaven is the errant desire of the angels and the demons and the stars, as the Pharisees and scribes, it is they who belong to the archons who have authority over them. So the archons are the ones that are trying to prevent you from entering into the kingdom of God. Or the kingdom of heaven, as, as we're reading here in uh, Matthew's gospel there. And the thing is, is they do, the, 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 the Jewish people of that day, they wanted to come. They want to make it. But you're not letting them in. And, why, and, and what prevents them from getting in? Well, the odd thing is, in this document here, it says that the Pharisees and scribes of the law and the leaven is the errant desire of the angels. In other words, the Talmudic doctrine that they have injected in there, and they're using, these fallen angels are using the Pharisees, their children, so to speak, to put out this false law. That's why Jesus says here in Matthew, at the very beginning up here, right? He says, upon the seat of Moses, the Pharisees and sages sit. But he goes on to say, now whatever he says for you to do, you keep and do. Talking about what Moses said. But according to their ordinances and deeds, do not because they say and do not. That's because they're bringing about that law of, fall, of fallen angel Talmudic law to put the burden upon the people. Something they wouldn't even do themselves, but they want to make sure you have to do it, right? That's, that's what he's saying here. Now, verse 14 is also directly connected to verse 13. You may not realize it, but it is. Woe to you Pharisees and sages hypocrites, because you devour and divide the wealth of certain widows with lengthy expositions or lengthy prayers. You can translate it either way. For this, you will suffer a long punishment. Now, why do I say they're connected? Because the men are trying to, they want to make it into the kingdom of heaven, but they've already been cut off. And now what's left? The widow of the house. And they're going to devour up her place as well. Verse 15 is very important. You compass sea and land to bind the heart of one man to your faith. And when he is bound, he is doubly worse than before. And that is so true. He's actually more evil than what he was before. You know, this is not the Karaite view of the gospel, or not the, the gospel, but the Karaite view of, in Judaism that at one time existed, where the Jewish people, they believed Moses, they believed the prophets, and that was it. They didn't need a Talmudic dissertation of 613 laws to be added to there, and then on top of that, a whole bunch of more laws that have been added as well. Since then, by a bunch of Nephilim Pharisaic rabbis. It's going to get better though. Watch. Hmm. Verse 16. Oil lechem. You know, woe to you. Council of the blind. I found that one interesting as well. Moshvi. In other words, they sit in the seat. Ha'orim, the blind sit in the seat. That's why they call it a council of blind. Who say that he who swears by the temple is not obliged, but he who vows by anything which is consecrated to the structure of the temple is obligated to pay. Now the important point here is that the fact that they're called the council of the blind. 
Do you know that in uh, a lot of the, uh, and these are, like again, they're not biblical, I don't consider them biblical, but historical information that we look at the books that were found down in Egypt, 2000, uh, that are estimated to be roughly about 18, 1900 years old. The Satan is called Samael, which means God of the blind. And here we have here Jesus saying, Woe to you, counsel of the blind. He goes on in verse 7 Mad and blind men, which is greater, the temple or that which is consecrated to the temple? And again, in verse 17, as he said there to them, he again calls them the blind. Now, it's building a momentum. If you really pay attention to what Jesus is saying here, he's building a momentum here. It says, Woe, blind men, which is more the gift or the altar? Now, in this case here, in verse 19, we don't have the word woe blind men in there, but it's taken because of what he says in the verse, um, uh, verse 17. He who swears by the altar swears by it and, everything, and, and by everything which is in it. He who swears by the throne of God swears by it and by the one who sits upon it. Verse 23, Woe to them, the sages and Pharisees, who tithe, deal in pomegranate, but who commit robbery. That which is weightier, that is the judgment of the Torah, which are kindness, truth, and faithfulness. These are the commandments worthy of doing, and one should not forget them. Again, this is all indictments here. But verse 24 is the most damaging one next to verse, I think it's 30. Let's see, let me drop down before I hit verse 24. Um, verse 33, where he calls them serpents and seed of vipers. Talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees, right? But before he ever did that, and I never noticed this before, <clears throat> because I had not even read it in the Hebrew. Verse 24, Jesus says, and he does not use the word offspring when he says it. He says, Zerah menachayagim haorim, seed of the leaders of the blind, who are strict in the matter of a net and swallow the camel. That is so provocative. You know, everybody is freaked out, especially like some of the messianic leaders of this day, because Jesus called them a bunch of hypocrites and a bunch of vipers and seed of vipers. But we had totally missed in Matthew 24. Now, George Howard says, offspring of blind leaders. But he actually said, seed of the blind leaders. Again, Satan is referred to as the blind God. So hold that in mind. Now, if we look at the um, this is just the, the Greek version in verse 16. We have, Woe unto you, blind guides. So it clearly says it. You fools and blind. For whether is greater the gold of the temple or that, or, or that the sanctified the gold. Going down to verse 24. Ye blind guides. Again, he says it. But in the Hebrew one, he says, Seed of the blind which strain at a gnat, swallow the camel. 
And again, you have to really understand though that we are dealing, if we go back to verse 13, that they are the very ones, verse 16, knowing that they are from the, you know, uh, or I, I, still going back to verse 13, but woe unto you Pharisees, scribes, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. And if you look at the Hebrew Matthew, it is very provocative. And the fact that he says, woe unto you Pharisees and sages, hypocrites. And as I quoted the right way to translate it, woe to you Pharisees and sages, godless ones. The kingdom of heaven is before the face of the sons of men. And they want to come in without you, but you prevent them from coming. You prevent them. You see, man, the sons of men, and, 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 and you have to understand, when you're looking at this, let me show you this in the Hebrew here. Melechot Shemayim. Let me see, I, I, can't, uh, I can't get that one to highlight. Let's try it. Can't even get the word heaven to highlight. Gee, my netty. Okay, Bepanav. To the right of that, the, first two, the next two words to the right would be the kingdom of heaven is in the face, Bepanav means in the face of the sons of men. Bene Adam, the sons of Adam. That in itself, if you didn't add the next, the rest of the sentence, and they want to come without you but you don't even let them come. The fact that it says, Be panav be bene adam, lets you know that the Pharisees and Sadducees are not even equal to the sons of Adam. That's the whole premise of what we're finding out in this indictment to begin with. The Pharisees and the sages that Jesus was calling out are not descendants of Adam. But rather, they are of the blind ones, and they are of the seed of serpent, or the seed of vipers, and the serpent themselves. That's who they really are. And that's where the problem comes in. All right? So, Let's go back down where we left off at. Going into verse 25, Woe to you Pharisees and sages, because you cleanse cups and platters on the outside, but inside of them is full of wickedness and uncleanliness. In reality, if you take this into context with what's being said here in Matthew chapter 23, we realize now, in other words, there own physical body appears to be human but on the inside it's only death I've often wondered when they will talk about aliens and everybody ever heard about talk about aliens say that this race stinks that race stinks they got an ungodly smell and an odor yeah no wonder they're they're dead verse 26 hypocrite Cleanse first that which is um, inside in order that which is on the outside might be pure. Verse 27, Woe to you sages and Pharisees, hypocrites, who are like unto white, white and sepulchers which appear on the outside to be beautiful to men, but on the inside are full of bones of the dead and filthy continues to build the same momentum. Thus you appear on the outside to be righteous to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe, hypocrites, Pharisees and sages, because you build the tombs of the prophets and glorify 
the monuments of the righteous. And you say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have permitted them to put the prophets to death. This is going to be the true indictment against them right here. Jesus says, in this you bear witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who killed the prophets. You behave according to the deeds of your fathers. Serpents, seed of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance? You remember, what? let's look this up real quick, real quick. There's another scripture too, right? Remember when Jesus says you're of your father, the devil? And I think we're going to have to go with ye are your father, the devil. Yeah, John 8, 4. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, if we look at John 8, 44, let's see if we can back up. Um... Because you're still dealing with the whole part about Pharisees. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were of Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Why do they say we were not born of fornication? They knew what Ezra said in chapter 9 where the seed was mingled. Now, not all the priests did that. Not all the priests were corrupt. And by no means are all Jews of Jesus' day of a Pharisaic bloodline or a Nephilim bloodline. It is still a minority, I would argue the same. But the problem is that minority has been trapped into a lie and blinded by the Pharisees and Sadducees and the sages of their day. If we go back and look at the scripture to see it, we'll find this out as we go. That's actually in verse 34. This one sentence, this first sentence, is not in the Greek. And it's very important. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of Jews, not the Pharisees and Sadducees, Therefore, behold, I am sending to you prophets, sages, scribes. Some of them you will kill. Some of them you will afflict in your synagogues. And you will pursue them from city to city. Upon you the blood of every righteous one which has been poured out upon the earth from the blood of Abel, the righteous, under the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you kill between the temple and the altar. Truly I say to you that all these things will come upon this generation. And upon Jerusalem who kills the prophets and removes those who are sent. How many times I wish to gather your children as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you would not. Therefore, you will leave your houses desolate. Truly I say to you, you will not see me henceforth until you will say, Blessed is our Savior. The Greek Matthew says, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Right? Either which way, there does seem to be a time that comes where they may have an opportunity for their eyes to be open because they have been blinded by those leaders or the guides of the blind, the seed of the blind. As Matthew 
as Jesus wrote in the, in the Hebrew Matthew when he says that they were the seed. Verse 24, the Zerah, Menahayagim Ha'olim, they are the they are the seed of the blind leaders, which is clearly a lineage of the Nephilim. As I brought out to you earlier, Jude, when we first started the video, Jude said, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. The only men ordained to condemnation were the Nephilim. There was no hope for them. And now they've crept in in the times of Jesus unaware. And the Pharisees and Sadducees truly were the ones that crept in unaware. And Jesus indicts them for the blood of every righteous person on the earth. Satan is the one that's guilty of all that bloodshed, right? But he puts it at the, at, the, at the very feet of the Pharisees. And people totally miss the fact that he has identified them as a Nephilim bloodline. That is why the blood is put going all the way back to Abel until now. This is why we read in the book of Numbers, for example, and I'll pull that up for you just as a reminder, right? And I think it's the book of Numbers. Let me just double check to be sure, but I believe it is. It could be Joshua. Um, let me see real quick. Numbers 13, I believe, is where we're at. Yes. Uh, yes, right here. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Enoch, who came of the Nephilim. And I've taught it so many times, Minha Nephilim. That is clearly without the Yod, like we see at this line up here. You have that little Yod in between the Fe and the Lamed there, which lets you know that Enoch, his father, was a fallen angel. So after the flood. And as they said in John, we be not born in fornication which they're trying to identify they're trying to distance themselves from the act that we find in the book of Ezra uh, and we've brought that out many times for you as well uh, Ezra chapter 9 and that being where uh, they had uh, taken of their daughters for themselves so that the holy seed had mingled themselves with the peoples of the land the Dead Sea Scrolls also identifying that exact same truth in that writing as well and then you have things like here uh, where uh, Rabbi Ariel Tzedak uh, on the ancient aliens makes this statement I've sped it up a little bit hopefully we can get it in here without getting copyright whacked again listen in to this one tradition tells us that the army of the Messiah is not to come from heaven but is to arise from inner earth and therefore dominate the surface world. So the army of God comes from inner earth, according to Ariel Tzedak, uh, what he says there. If you look at uh, other, uh, like in this video here, he goes into a lot of things here, extraterrestrials, disclosure, biblical prophecies, Kabbalistic revelations, and some of the things I would probably agree with him on. But the thing is, is he like that of other rabbinical teachers uh, think that uh, reptilians are a good thing. No, they're not. No, they're not. And that's where the real danger comes in in this case here. Now, for the sake of time, because I don't want to go deeper into this with you, but I want to share with you though, once we see what, what had happened here, we saw that that Jesus said as he spoke to the rest of them, and you know, and until they say, you know, he would they would not see him henceforth. You will not see me henceforth until you will say, Blessed is our Savior. Then he goes on into chapter 24. And chapter 24, when you really begin to look at it, after he has indicted 
the Pharisees and sages not only for the bloodshed of every righteous person on the earth and identifying them as a bloodline, a lineage of Nephilim fallen ones going through chapter 23, but then chapter 24 goes into the judgment. And this is why when you look at chapter 24, it's not just limited to what would happen in 70 AD, but it brings the judgment all the way down to modern days. Now he starts it off, and it came to pass when Jesus went out from the temple, as he was going, his disciples drew near to show him the buildings of the temple. He said, you see all these, truly I say to you that all will be destroyed, and there will not be left there one stone upon another. As he said on the Mount of Olives opposite of the temple, Peter and John and Andrew asked him secretly, when will these things be? What will be the sign of his coming? You know, they, they ask all those questions there. And he answers all of them. Part of that is the judgment that would happen at 70 AD. But then as you go further down into Matthew, then the judgments that would come in our day uh, and, and subsequently even things that are still yet to come are all spelled out in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. And I think what I'll do is maybe I'll save going into the judgment here a little bit deeper in a separate message. Maybe I can do that tomorrow uh, and share that with you, or I'll do that for you on Monday, but one or the other we'll see there. By the way, we're still loading up more videos too over on our Patreon channel, so I hope that'll be a blessing to you. Uh, but definitely take what I just shared with you to heart. This, I know, is very difficult. I have been battling in my body. Satan has attacked me in every way possible to try to keep me from bringing this information out to you. Uh, but, but clearly, and I, I will say this too, in stark contrast, when we read here about Cain, Cain became, you know, he said, I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer in the earth. Remember now, Jesus indicted the Pharisees as a lineal bloodline for the death of Abel. And the only way, he could have done it, the only way he could do that is to go back through a lineal bloodline and hold them responsible for that, right? Now, when God puts out there, we, or we have here, the Yomer lo Yehovah lechen, kol, okay, and the Lord said unto him, therefore, whosoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a sign for Cain, lest anyone finding him should smite him. But the contrast, the stark contrast here, God put like a protection over Cain, but Jesus indicted Cain for his murder and indicted the Pharisees and then tells you the judgment thereof. I find these things very fascinating. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the support of the work that we're doing here. Don't forget, uh, please support the work we do here. You can do it online or by our mailing address, P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. And, uh, and also, don't forget to resubscribe to Israeli News Live here on YouTube so we can get past that threshold, get out of this 398,000 subscribers. I need your help in doing that. God bless you and thank you for listening.